Good morning all. Today I want to look at the exclusive OR gate. So I've built on a little breadboard an exclusive OR gate and I've done it in such a way that I've arranged the LEDs so that they're in sort of gate layout. Here are my two input LEDs, they're both high at the moment and here's my output LED and I've got a couple of switches so I can change the inputs and we can see the resultant changes on the output. Now, in order to get this uh, physical layout, the actual wiring under my little label here is a bit of a spaghetti, but uh, I, I'm not too concerned about that as long as you can see the inputs and the output, and I could stick a little gate sticker on there. Uh, the chip I'm using is the 74LS86. This is a quad two input exclusive OR gate. I'm only using the gate up in the top right hand corner. You can see the two input wires, the purple and the black running in there and the output going through a resistor to my output LED. Now my usual uh, backlit table arrangement doesn't work terribly well for this because it kind of bleaches out the LED. So I'm going to stand this battery box up uh, just a little bit there so that it casts a bit of a shadow over this. And now the first thing I want to do with this is to create a truth table. So my two push buttons are tied to ground at one end and that means that when they're physically high, in other words, when they're sitting up, then the input is electrically high. So to create two lows, I need to press both the switches. And so starting to fill out the truth table now, when both inputs are low, the output is low, so a zero. When we have the input zero, one, in other words, when one input is high, the output is high. Now that also applies the other way around. So one, zero, when one input is high, the output is high, so high again there. And finally, when both inputs are high, the output goes low. So that's the truth table for an exclusive OR gate. So how does an exclusive OR gate differ from a regular OR gate or an inclusive OR gate? Well, the difference is here in the 1-1 one, one state, a regular or inclusive OR gate would give you a 1 output when both inputs are a 1. Now I can show this um, by replacing the chip that's in there, the quad exclusive OR gate, with a quad uh, regular or inclusive OR gate, which I think is an LS32. I'll just get one of those now. Right, so I happen to have one here. There's a 74 LS32, so I'm going to swap that for the 86 that's in the board. Right, let's peel the sticker off, switch off, and uh, oh, how am I going to lever that chip out? Right, cocktail stick to the rescue. No particular reason for using a cocktail stick, I just had to have one. Right, let's put the LS32 in there. Now, was that where it was? No. It was in the next position along. Okay, let's give that a try. And uh, we can see immediately with both switches high, both inputs are high, the output is also high. So this fourth state here would be ones on the input and also a one on the output. All the other states are the same. Zero, zero gives us a zero. Uh, zero, one gives us a one. One, zero gives us a one. But uh, critically, the difference is that 1-1 one, one on an inclusive OR gate gives a 1 output, and that's different to the exclusive OR gate. Now, this goes some way to explain the word exclusive. Um, on the inclusive OR gate, the truth table includes the AND state, where 1 AND 1 gives a 1 output. With the exclusive OR gate, I'll just switch the chip back. With the exclusive OR gate, which is now back in position, you can see that the AND state, 1 AND 1, doesn't give you a 1 output. So the AND state is excluded. Now, another way of remembering the exclusive OR gate's truth table is that the output is high when the inputs are different. So at the moment, they're the same and the output is low. Let's make the inputs different. So zero and one, they're different, the output goes high. One and zero, the inputs are different, the output goes high. If the outputs are the same, both high or low, 
the output stays low. So this gate doesn't like the same state on the input, doesn't give an output for that. It likes the inputs to be different. So I've written that on my uh, truth table. The output is true when the inputs are different. Now there is another way to think about what the exclusive OR gate is doing, and that is that it's a controllable inverter. Now if we look at the, take one of the inputs as a control input and the other input as a data input, let's uh, say that the bottom input is the control input. When the control input is high, the other part of the gate is an inverter. You can see that the output is the opposite of the input. And if I make the input low, the output goes high. So you can see that this gate has an inverting function when one of the inputs is high. Now let's take that input low and the other half of the gate now is a non-inverting buffer. The output is the same as the input. So this gate works as a controllable inverter when one input is high, and we can switch this around, it doesn't matter which way it is. So let's say that now the top one is the uh, control input. When that's high, the other input acts as an inverter. You can see the output is the inverse of the input. When the control input, the top one goes low, you can see that output and input are the same, and the inverting function disappears. So I've also written that down. The exclusive OR gate is a controllable inverter. But the exclusive OR gate has one further trick up its sleeve. It can also be used as an adder. So let's add these two digits. Let's start with 0, 0. Add them together. The output is 0. 0, 1. Add them together. The output is 1. 1 and 0, add those together, and the answer is 1. Now what happens when you add 1 and 1? Well, you get 2. On here, 1 and 1 gives me 0. But in binary, of course, 2 is 1, 0. So in order to make this adder produce this result 1, 0, in other words, 2, we need to add another gate. And what that gate needs to do is for a separate output, it works as an AND gate. It only needs to provide a 1 when the two inputs are also 1. And uh, you can see from this printout from Wikipedia on the adder that the circuit for a half adder is simply an exclusive OR gate for the sum and an AND gate for the carry bit. And so I've also added on to my list of what the exclusive OR gate can do, half adder. Now the exclusive OR gate on its own doesn't make a complete half adder, but if you have an exclusive OR gate for the sum and an AND gate for the carry, then you have a half adder. Now these days, of course, you're not likely to be uh, meeting the exclusive OR gate actually as a discrete uh, chip you're much more likely to come across the exclusive or instruction in a microcontroller. So here's a printout from the instruction set uh, page from the 80 Mega 328P. This is the microcontroller that is uh, used in a lot of Arduino products. And you can see here in the instruction set summary, this is actually page 427. It's a very large data sheet. Uh, e or now they use E or rather than X or, but this is exclusive or registers, and this is what it actually does. Uh, RD register D, it's an 8-bit register, is exclusive or with register R, and the result is put back in to RD. This is the exclusive or function in the 80 Mega 328P. And uh, here's another printout from uh, a different microcontroller. This time it's a PIC. 16F, uh, 685, or 8789, or 690. And here there are two exclusive OR instructions. One, exclusive ORs are literal with the W register, and the other one, exclusive ORs W with a file. Now, once again, uh, in the PIC, the W register and all the files are 8-bit registers. So how do you exclusive OR 8-bit registers? 
Well, the answer is that for the 8-bit registers, you actually have eight exclusive OR gates. Now, it's quite difficult to draw because I've got to attach one of the register outputs from, uh, well, let's call this the W register and this uh, a file. And I'm really here thinking about this exclusive OR instruction where exclu we're exclusive ORing uh, W with, the with a file and putting the result back into either one of these. Um, we have eight exclusive OR gates. I'll probably get stuck drawing this in a while, but this is essentially how it works. And the outputs are all bussed round. Um, I'll, I'll draw the outputs all as a single bus. Well, they're either sent to um, back to the inputs of W or they're sent to the inputs of F, depending on how you use this instruction. So I've completed the drawing. It is a bit of a mess, but you can basically see what's happening. You've got an 8-bit register, another 8-bit register, and eight exclusive OR gates. Uh, the two inputs are coming from two bits of the two registers. So we've got eight lots of this. Now this is in what's called the arithmetic logic unit of the microcontroller. Um, when you use an exclusive OR instruction, then exclusive OR gates are used from the arithmetic and logic unit. Um, if this were, say, an OR WF or an AND WF, then these would be OR gates or AND gates. Uh, this line running back is actually eight bits of wire. It's an eight bit bus. So the, uh, the output from the eight exclusive OR gates is fed back into the eight inputs of the W register, for example. Now I wanted to see if I could build something that simulates the way this works. So I've come up with this. Um, I'm not going to be using eight exclusive OR gates and eight bit registers. I'm actually only going to be using two bits. So here are my two bits, the two red LEDs. This gate is uh, a quad D type latch. So it can behave kind of as half of one of these eight bit latches. I'm only going to use two bits of this latch and I'm gonna put the exclusive OR gate from this circuit. I'm gonna transfer this chip over onto this board and see if I can get this thing up and running. So let's put my 74LS86 into this circuit. Um, it goes in there. So now what I've got, a bit like the, um, the two registers and the arithmetic logic unit, uh, I've got a 4-bit register here. Again, as I say, I'm only using two bits, so the two registers on this side. I've got two exclusive OR gates, and the outputs of the exclusive OR gates are going back to the D inputs of my latch. Now, I've got a little clock here. It's a 555 timer. So every time this green light flashes, I'm essentially executing this instruction, exclusive OR, uh, my working register, here's my working register, my 4-bit latch, with a file. Now the file in this case is just simply two switches. So here's the circuit actually operating. Now what's happening here? Well, every time the clock pulse goes high, so every time this green LED comes on, we are taking the outputs of the latch, passing them through the exclusive OR gate, and putting the result back into the input of the latch. So why are these lamps flashing on and off? Well, remember that an exclusive OR gate can work as a controllable inverter. If one of the inputs to the exclusive OR gate is high, and with these switches up, they're high, then the other input of the exclusive OR gate inverts and passes the inverse through to the output. So every time this latch is being clocked, the latch is receiving the opposite of what's currently in it latched back in. So it's toggling. It's taking the opposite of the current data and putting that in as, as the next data. So it simply toggles on and off. Now, if I press the two switches so that they're both low, and I hit one at a slightly different time to the time I hit the other, the latch is still latching in um, a copy of its data, but this time it's not inverted. So every time the green LED pulse is high, the latch is latching in the same data that it already has in it, so it doesn't change. And that's not very exciting when data doesn't change. It's much more exciting when it does change. Now, if I time this right, 
I can change the state of one of these LEDs and actually get the two LEDs to uh, alternate. But all that's happening here is we're just taking two bits of a four bit parallel latch and inverting them every time the clock goes high. Just happens that the uh, two bits of the latch are opposite to each other at the moment. So here's the actual circuit of what I'm doing on this board. I have a continuously running clock clocking this latch. The outputs of this latch go to one half of an exclusive OR gate. The other half is going to just a couple of switches, which I can press. And then the outputs of the exclusive OR gates are being fed back into the inputs, uh, the same corresponding bit, of course, of my two bit latch. So if we assume that the exclusive OR gates are working as controllable inverters, if I hold the two uh, exclusive OR gate inputs that have switches on them low, then these exclusive OR gates are non-inverting, they're simply buffers. The data in the latch is being passed straight back through and clocked in again. If I take these switches high, then the exclusive OR gates are now working as inverters. So the output of the latch Every time there's a clock pulse, the green one, is being inverted by the exclusive OR gate and fed back into the input of the latch. So every time a clock pulse occurs, the latch changes to the opposite state. Now I can of course hold just one of these and one of the LEDs will flash on and off and the other one will stay the same. It happens to be a zero at the moment, but if I change the timing, then I can lock in a one and that one is simply being written round uh, time after time after time. It's going a little bit dim, you can see. Well, that's because the resistor values are extremely low and it's causing a bit of voltage drop. But I can now use these buttons to create opposite toggling or, uh, I need to get them both low there, toggling in synchronization. There's no link between the two bits of my latch. They're completely separate circuits. The only common thing is the clock. So in this circuit, I'm really using the exclusive OR gates as this thing, the controllable inverter. If I take one input of the exclusive OR gate low, then the inverter doesn't invert, it's non-inverting. If I take it high, then every time we get a clock pulse, it does invert. So that was a little look at the exclusive OR gate, which can be used as a difference detector or a controllable inverter or even a half adder. Cheerio.